Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, sheep wool and uh, cochineal, or uh, yeah, coch cochineal. Anyways, I was doing some research on uh, dyeing wool on Google, and it led me down all these back roads, and I came to uh, cochineal. And cochineal is an insect that produces a really beautiful red dye. And uh, depending on the mordant um, or, or whatever it is you mix it with, it could sometimes even be like a, a purplish dye. And uh, cochineals live on cactuses. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. And so I checked out where they're, I'm from. You know, normally uh, deserts and stuff, wherever cactuses grow on. And we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. We've got a few cactuses out here. But we didn't expect any of them to uh, have it. Well, and where in fact they actually did. All these little uh, white spots are cochineal females that are sucking the nutrients out of the cactus. So what I'm going to do is we're going to harvest the cactus and we're going to bring all these uh, females indoors because that way we're going to kind of farm kind of farm these cochineals. The idea being where we live it gets very cold in the winter because um, we're not obviously uh, in the desert and so if we bring them indoors we can actually harvest cochineals um, throughout the year whereas where, where I live here in Georgia we probably would only get one uh, uh, could only propagate them once a year and this way also I can protect them from pests and the weather because rain kind of washes these girls off and they can't get back on the cactuses so rain is a, is a bad factor which it's not really much of an issue for them in the desert obviously because there's not as much rain and so um, so pests like ladybugs and ants and um, a few other insects are cause lots of harm to a cochineal colony and then of course like I said rain and then the weather they do need it very warm and so that's why we've decided that we're gonna harvest them uh, these cactuses have been kinda growing here in the sheep pasture and so the sheep aren't gonna mind if we take these cactuses and hopefully we can get this colony going to a good size to where we can actually produce some some really neat cochineal dye and I had a uh, uh, so anyways, it's a really cool thing. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to harvest these uh, uh, cactus pads. And then what we'll do is we'll probably um, do another video on my setup. And probably in a few months, I'll do an update video on how everything's been turning out. So stay tuned. But yeah, another cool thing is each one of these little white dots, and some are in clusters, um, others are, you know, more standalone. But every single one is a female. Oop. And just to <laughs> accidentally uh, squish one. So how it works. And I think it's really neat is the cactuses have a acid inside them and the cochineals when they're sucking this nutrients the cactus uh, nutrients they they get this acid and it stores up in their body so cochineal depending on the species and, the, and how much acid is in the cactus also it can range anywhere from like 8 to like 24 percent 
carminic acid. And so, um, which then also determines how bright the dye is. So, it's a really cool deal. And, so I've been really, uh, you know, of course, doing a bunch of research. And historically, here in Georgia, there were, uh, they would harvest cochineal. It, cochineal is actually the uh, the dye used for the English red coats, and so uh, that was pretty neat. And yeah, trying to trying to be careful because each female I squish is one less breeder, but they're kind of everywhere and. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna rain tonight, so I'm trying to get these all harvested and put in, so I don't run the risk of losing a bunch of them. Another thing is, it takes a uh, just popped. They also have they produce this little uh, fuzz. It's very sticky kind of a protective coating protects them from the harsh rays of the sun as they sit there for three two, you know three months sucking juice and whatnot from the cactus and so on and so forth Some of these smaller pads, they just kind of twist it. Kind of twist and pop off. But well, it takes 70,000 70, uh, bugs to produce one pound of cochineal so that's why every every female counts when we're doing this Look at that. Ooh. Ton of them there. Of course, we're trying to... This isn't going to kill them, actually, the, uh, the, the cactuses. Um, cactuses... One of the main ways to reproduce cactuses is to just pop off these uh, little pads and plant them. But these uh, cochineals do kill the individual cactus pads because they, they're just suck, sucking and leaching so much nutrients. Um, so a big colony will actually destroy a cactus um, if if enough of them were to uh, land and do their thing. Oh boy. This one here is good. Let me get you a close up of this one. Look at all those. Tons and tons of them. Looks like a couple. Down here might have got squished, but that's okay. That's, that's really neat. And 
and uh, so anyways, this is a really neat project we're going to start, and super looking forward to doing this, something not, really, not a whole lot of people are doing anymore, and I think it'll be a big treat to get one of my own sheep wool dyed a beautiful red and it would be a hundred percent from the farm wouldn't that be neat another dye we have here on the property um, is uh, pokeberries and pokeberries the juice is uh, done correctly uh, it'll do produce a purple dye which is pretty cool um, so, might, uh, look how many are on this little tiny cactus pad. I mean, not too many on the back end, but that's just like, I don't know, probably at least 50 right there. So, that's cool. And of course, <laughs> be best if you had a, a proper saw. I'm just using a, a steak knife, and I think I just cut the wrong. <laughs> cut the whole piece. But look at all those. Look at all of that. That is just crazy. <laughs> Man, I don't know if uh, might have half a pound worth of bugs right there. <laughs> I don't know. So it sure seems like it. Now let's keep on going. This one, this one here is actually the biggest, biggest batch I think. Doing research, what happens is when the females emerge from these little cocoons, um. They, they walk around for a few days waiting to be uh, impregnated by the males. And so sometimes birds will collect them and then they'll uh, accidentally drop them off at another cactus. And so that's how these areas, because obviously we don't have tons of cactuses. Um, there may be, you know, all of our cactuses are probably at least 20, 30 feet away from each other, if not further. And so how they travel is pretty much by the luck of avian transportation. So we got really fortunate that that they got dropped off here where they can be <laughs> appreciated to some degree. Now, one thing about cactuses is some of them have prickly points. Um, this actually doesn't hurt the bugs unless I accidentally squish them because um, you allow them to naturally reproduce and then after they lay the eggs, the females, they pretty much die. And so it's the dried carcasses from these females that you then harvest. So you're not actually killing babies or adults or anything. You just wait for these old females to finish their life cycle and then uh, harvest them. So it's a completely natural, renewable source of dye. Look at that one there. That's crazy. Actually, what I might do is... Well, there's a few on here that will... Every... Every one is useful, so I guess we'll keep that pad. And, of course, the sheep are hollering for babies. And... Hey. 
Well, I got a big old tub full, and I think I'm gonna hunt around for some other cactuses and see if they've got any. Call it a day. Thanks for watching.